Hello my dear students good morning to all welcome back to google classroom in this session we will discuss about theorem and axiom which is related with euclid's postulates and some exercise questions also we will discuss here okay so we can start our today's session now in the last session we already discussed about euclid's five postulates so today we will discuss an axiom which is related with euclid's first postulate what is euclid's first postulate a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point okay a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point this is the postulate one so about this there is an axiom that we will study now given two distinct points there is a unique line that passes through them given two distinct points there is a unique line that passes through them that means in the figure there are two points p and q through p only we can draw infinitely many lines through q only we can draw infinitely many lines but through p and q we can draw one and only one line okay through p and q we can draw only one line that is the meaning of this axiom the next topic is theorem 1 okay the statement of the theorem 1 is two distinct lines cannot have more than one point in common two distinct lines cannot have more than one point in common there is no importance in proof of that theorem okay so you just study the statement of this theorem two distinct lines cannot have more than one point in common okay next we can discuss exercise 5.1 question number 3 consider two postulates given below first one given any two distinct points a and b there exists a third point c which is in between a and b then second one is there exist at least three points that are not on the same line there exist at least three points that are not on the same line do these postulates contain any undefined terms are these postulates consistent do they follow from euclid's postulates explain so these are the questions do the given postulates contain any undefined terms are these postulates consistent do they follow from euclid's postulates explain okay so here in this postulates two terms are undefined two terms are undefined terms that are line and point okay then both the postulates are consistent because they represent two different situations first one says that given two points a and b there is point c lying on line in between them it is possible okay a line with the two points a and b between a and b there is a point c lying on the same line okay then second one says that given a and b you can take c not lying on the line through a and b okay that is the meaning of the second postulate given a and b as two points then you can take c not lying on the line 
through A and B. Okay. So these two postulates are consistent because they represent two different situations. Now the third question is: Are these sorry? Do they follow from Euclid's postulates? Both these statements do not follow from Euclid's postulates. However, they follow from axiom given below. That axiom is given two distinct points. There is a unique line that passes through them. Okay, both of these statements, both of these postulates, do not follow from Euclid's postulates. However, they follow from the axiom. That axiom is given two distinct points. There is a unique line that passes through them. Okay. Now the next question is question number four. If a point C lies between two points A and B such that AC equal BC, then prove that AC equal half of AB. Explain by drawing the figure. So here in the question it is given that there is a point C lies between A and B. So we can draw a line segment AB and mark a point C such that AC equal BC. Okay. So now it is given AC and BC are equal. Then what we need to prove? AC equal half AB. That we need to prove. So here this AC, when, when we add AC to AC, then what we will get? Twice of AC. That twice of AC means what? The total length AB. Okay. So here we can say it as BC plus BC also. But in the question, they ask to prove AC equal half AB. So we add AC on both sides. So the equation become AC plus AC equal BC plus AC. Then LHS become 2AC equal RHS is BC plus AC itself. BC plus AC is what? Total length of AB. Okay. Now 2AC equal AB. Then AC equal half of AB. According to the question, we can add AC or BC. If in the question it is asked to, to prove BC equal half AB, then we need to add BC on both sides. But here in the question it is given that to prove AC equal half AB. So we add AC on both sides. Then we got 2AC equal AB and AC equal half of AB. Okay. Now question number 5. That is a continuation of question 4. Okay. So in question 4, point C is called a midpoint of line segment AB. Prove that every line segment has one and only one midpoint. So here let us assume that there are two different midpoints C and D of a line segment AB. We assume that C and D are the midpoints. Okay. Because we need to prove that every line segment has one and only one midpoint. So when we take it as two or that means more than one midpoints then we can start this proof. Okay. So here we assume that there are two different midpoints C and D of a line segment AB. Okay. Then if C is the midpoint of line segment AB, then we can write AC equal half AB. AC equal half AB. That means twice of AC equal AB. Okay. Then if D is the midpoint, then what we can write? AD equal half AB. Then AB equal 2AD. First we got AB equal 2AC. Now we got AB equal 2AD. So from 1 and 2 what we get? AC and AD are equal. AB equal 2AC. AB equal 2AD. That means 2AC equal 2AD. So AC equal AD. Okay. 
so from the axiom the things which are double of the same things are equal to one another according to that axiom we got 2ac equal to ad then ac and ad are also be equal okay so this is possible only when both the points c and d coincide ac and ad are equal means c and d that two points should be coincide okay that means c and d are not two different points not two different points hence our assumption is contradicting with axiom first we took c and d are as two points which are the midpoints now we got c and d are not two different points that means there is a contradiction about our assumption so our assumption is wrong and so every line segment has one and only one midpoint our assumption is wrong so we can conclude that every line segment has one and only one midpoint hence proved that's all for today thank you and have a nice day